goes well, we'll be standing on the summit of Mount Everest in the next 12 hours. Thanks for following this journey, everyone. I don't know what's gonna happen. <coughs> Imagine standing 28,500 feet above sea level. You're in an area called the death zone. And the reason why they call it the death zone is because your body literally starts to die. And you're dressed like a spaceman wearing moon boots and breathing bottled oxygen. And at 5 a.m., you witness one of the most glorious sunrises on planet Earth. And beneath you are the highest mountains on the planet staring up at you, a forest of mountains. And to think that three years prior to that moment, I had never even slept in a tent. That fear completely overtakes you. And you have a choice in that moment. Do you let that fear overtake you? Or do you take that fear and channel that fear into strength? I channeled that fear each and every single time. And when things got extremely difficult, I had to remind myself of the purpose, of the reason why I was going through this. And that was Dr. Egan. And no matter where I went on that mountain, there was a constant reminder that what happened to Sean could have easily happened to me. But I believe that it was a chance worth taking. Because sometimes it's through those chances that what we find at the end of the road or at the top of the mountain. Sometimes it's what we find while going through that, that no one can give us and no one can teach us, and only we can find. And this was my journey of finding life. And I was discovering who I was through trying to fulfill someone else's dream. We're above the clouds at Camp 4, 26,000 feet. We're in the death zone. This is an area where your body literally starts to die. I've been in this position before. I was here carrying my friend Sean Egan's spirit to the top of the world. And this year, I hope to be able to achieve what I was once unable to accomplish. So seven weeks into the expedition, I am poised to reach the top of the world, 26,000 feet above sea level in an area called the Death Zone. The area where your body literally starts to die. And you are deteriorating faster than you can recover. And it is minus 40 degrees and you can barely feel your fingers and you can barely feel your toes. And it's hard to think, it's hard to sleep, it's hard to do anything. It's hard to put one foot in front of the other. And everything started going wrong. The weather was deteriorating. My Sherpa got sick. My camera got left behind. I mean, I was there to make a film and my camera got left behind. Yet I carried on. And imagine in that environment at 26,000 feet above sea level, every single step that you take requires five breaths. One step, five breaths. And you draw from the deepest part of your soul in order to place that single foot in front of the other. Sean Egan liked to refer to these as baby steps. This is how we have to tackle these monstrous goals in our lives at times. And over the past two years, I've had the privilege of standing on a stage similar to this one in front of over 20,000 students in Eastern Ontario, and the response was overwhelming. I mean, these kids just wanted to change the world. They realized that they too were on a journey of finding life, and they were asking me, how can we help? What can we do? How can we make a difference? And what blew my mind is what happened next. 
I'm very, very happy to Electra. Thank you for to build this uh, school. Thank you for Chala when helping to Electra to make this school. And you know, I stand here today proud and privileged to witness this moment, your moment, this moment in time which we are all living. And I encourage you to grab onto it, to embrace it. And if I can quote Sean Egan, to always aim high, to embrace the challenges that lie ahead and to realize, right, the power that you have to live your passions, to create the storybook of your lives and your dreams and to contribute to making this world a better place. This is your opportunity. And I leave you with one final question. That was my journey of finding life. What's yours? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.